Editor's note, the following writing as communicated by Commander Hatton was transmitted directly to and received by Dharma, a skilled scribe specifically chosen by the lighted cosmic hosts of God for mankind. In order to help assist and illuminate all awakening souls and those still slumbering during this most critical period of time on Earth. Dharma, an identifying pen name designation meaning bringer of lighted truth as given by the hosts, in order to protect her identity and livelihood from the very ones who wanted her silenced at all costs. Although it was first printed and published in the April, 1991, newsletter, Phoenix Journal Express, many were not ready to hear it, and thus have not awakened. It's finally now time that you wake up. You must first begin to know and understand the tactics of your satanic adversary. Enemies to all of mankind, with the total intent of controlling, enslaving and depopulating the world. Otherwise, history is doomed to repeat itself, if, you do not open your eyes to their false and manipulated spoon-fed reality. So now without further ado, let us repost this important communicated message from the Pleiadian commander, as he weaves and shares his knowledge and insights to those who seek and walk the lighted divine path of truth. Disarm the populace. An important message of higher guidance and understanding. To all awakened lightworkers and to all souls still slumbering. From Giliaga's series Hatton on the 5th of March 1990. Kaza Communist Socialists, New One World Order, Socialist Bureaucrats, and Criminals have no desire to be shot, as I have previously stated. They prefer to deal only with an unarmed citizenry. What is equally important is that both the communists and the criminal element have long proven that they can and will obtain firearms, no matter what the government restrictions to the contrary might be. Further, they can literally count on being ingeniously and intentionally supplied with same. The communists have taken over nation after nation when the number of communists in that particular nation numbered less than 3%, about the number of Khaza elite in the United States, of the population. How can this happen? Because they are the ones with the guns. It has happened all around your globe and now right at home under your noses. Most Americans are still somehow not able to understand that the communists, elitist socialist Khazars, abroad and at home, and criminal treasonists, calling themselves your representatives in Congress, and socialist politicians are working around the clock to get the American people disarmed. Guns do not kill people, people kill people and if they have not guns, they will kill with other items if death be the intent. The government police intent is to have the ability of force by death weapons, bigger and stronger and deadlier than any you the people can have. It is mandatory for the one world order to keep you puppets in line. Let us refresh memories of Americans, it has already happened to myriads of other nations and America is in the midst of downfall and makes an exceptionally good current viewing example of how civilizations fall. A couple of years ago, the gun control movement coined the emotionally negative phrase Saturday Night Special to launch a campaign against handgun ownership, for example, 357 magnums, 38 specials, 45 automatics, etc. They were only partially successful in certain states and cities thanks to the efforts of several large pro-gun citizens groups. Now, the anti-gun political left, led by Handgun Control, Inc. and the National Coalition to Ban Handguns, 
has coined a new emotional propaganda phrase with which to incite anti-gun hysteria, the assault rifle. In the immediate wake of the Stockton, California murder of five school children by a preset maniac with an AK-47, yes, I mean exactly that which I say, you have no idea the kind of mental weapons which are in use against you. The political left across America began to scream in well-orchestrated unison, assault rifles are evil and barbaric and must be banned. After a week's national media blitz on this theme, they began to substitute for the phrase assault rifles, the phrase semi-automatic weapons, which includes most of the rifles and over half of the handguns and shotguns in America. So the second phase was to launch a cry for the banning of all semi-automatic firearms. Note, the only hunter's rifles that are not semi-automatic are the older bolt action, lever action, and pump action models, a tiny minority of all US rifles and revolvers. Even the popular World War II 45 automatic is a semi-automatic pistol. Even bolt-action rifles and most shotguns are included in the new anti-gun legislation. According to the U.S. Defense Department, assault rifles are by definition fully automatic. None of the foreign-made rifles banned by the Bush administration are fully automatic. These have been illegal since the 1930s and did you know that, nor are they assault rifles. This is a total scare propaganda phrase fabricated by the leftist gun control groups and latched onto by the media and administration. Uzi, AK-47 made in Gaza, Palestine. In March, 1989, the Bush administration moved to ban the importation of certain foreign-made semi-automatic rifles such as the Uzi, AK-47, etc., and in early April widened the ban on importation to all foreign-made semi-automatic rifles, including 22 caliber. They pressured Colt Industries, which has large military contracts with the government, to cancel production of the AR-15, and it did so, and are now pressuring other U.S. manufacturers to do the same. The BATF has even been sent into gun stores across America since mid-1989 to photocopy Form 4473 records of anyone who has bought a semi-automatic weapon. This is called the BATF Advanced Tracing Program. Oh yes, you need to know that BATF is the Gestapo of gun control, which is made up of rabidly anti-gun bureaucrats who have, for years, trounced on the rights of gun owners, hunters, gun dealers, etc. They are being trained by the Mossad KGB CIA to be Bush's primary enforcers. The anti-import law is totally meaningless and there is a steady supply of Uzis flowing into the country, in parts, to be assembled and sold as a domestic product. Meanwhile, the highly emotional anti-gun propaganda onslaught is accelerating all across the country, orchestrated by the political left. Stringent gun control legislation has been introduced in the House and Senate, in about 30 states, and dozens of cities, legislation ranging from registration of all handguns, rifles, and shotguns, confiscation of handguns and rifles, outlawing of the manufacture of firearms and ammunition, etc. Remember, dear ones, that it always begins through some innocuous operation to register or monitor criminals and thus and so, to deceive you about the real purpose of gradual strangulation to the populace.
It has nothing to do with gun security or less crime. It has everything to do with disarming an innocent public so that there is no defense when the madmen come to call at your door to steal your very lives. Note that this entire anti-gun onslaught is too well orchestrated, and moving far too rapidly via hundreds of leftist groups, the press, congressional liberals, and almost identical legislation popping up all across America at one time. To be spontaneous. In many ways, this onslaught closely resembles the highly emotional, brilliantly orchestrated leftist drive for South African sanctions. The political left is making its great final drive to disarm America and that, at the direct demand of your, Bush, administration and your would-be Khazar elite rulers of the One World Order. How can I say this? Because the drug business is a business controlled by your Bush administration, set up and orchestrated by ones now in your government or who are direct advisors to President Bush, himself. The Bush administration, as we have shown you through proof prior to this writing, are up to their ears, eyes, noses, and throats into the drug and money business. It is the business, in conjunction with oil control. The so-called drug war has been a nice presentable excuse for the government to massively invade America's financial privacy, under the guise that all Americans are potential money launderers. Now, the drug war is being used as an excuse for confiscating Americans' firearms under the pretext that drug runners use guns, so if we want to stop the drug war, we must disarm the American people. This, of course, is total nonsense, since the drug runners and criminals will never be disarmed. Furthermore, they use fully automatic weapons which are already illegal. Brady and Reagan. Prime pushers for gun control are, of course, the Brady Bunch, Mr. Brady being shot through the head at the same time an attempt was made on Reagan. B.S. I remind you that you have a ruling government of doubles, Robertoids. Reagan was already a replica at the time slain, again, and replaced. Brady was killed in order to allow a replacement of his old body by a programmed, purposeful double. These are the very kind of staged incidents which allow ease of integration, whereby the nation is in such shock that you notice nothing. Look carefully at who shot these ones and the family from which the young shooter came and the results of his handling afterward, don't be fools. Why is gun control so dangerous? According to the American Federation of Police. There are many Americans who fear for their lives. They know that at some point, they will have to protect themselves, their own families, and their own property. Should these people be disarmed? No, we don't need to disarm our loyal citizens, our friends, and our neighbors. Gun control is unconstitutional. The Second Amendment guarantees. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Crime in America including murder, rape, robbery, and drug running, is at an all-time high today. According to one of your most respected criminologists, Gary Clegg of Florida State University, in a very scholarly article in the February, 1988, issue of social problems. Personal defense with firearms in America occurs more than 2,000 times per day. He estimates that, there are 645,000 defensive uses of handguns against criminals per year, excluding police and military uses. Clegg concludes that civilian ownership and use of guns has a deterrent and social control effect on violent crimes and burglary.
a high-ranking official in the Houston, Texas Police Department stated several years ago, the police cannot prevent most crimes. They cannot be everywhere at once, nor can they anticipate where a criminal will strike next. They can only pick up the pieces, or bodies, after the fact. Armed citizens have to protect themselves. We cannot. It is the law of jungle and our cities, nation, and world have truly become a jungle. If strict gun control laws are enacted, criminals will continue to get all the guns they can possibly want without interference from you the people in competition for the selection of preference. While the citizens will be left unarmed and defenseless or in opposition to the law, with simultaneous probability of prosecution as a criminal, just for having possession of a gun. Prison inmates are quick to tell you that when mugging, or breaking into a home, their main worry is that they may well be facing a person who is armed and this acts as a major deterrent to the crime. A second danger, and this is far larger than you can possibly imagine, unless you are current with our writings about your border military installations, there is a giant horde of illegal immigrants, some 10 to 20 million to date, who continue to pour across borders annually. There is an above-average criminal element in these immigrant groups, both for individual criminals and for planned infiltration into your society of these criminal elements to set the stage for takeover as the time is properly set up. In addition, you in America are wide open to invasion by the communists from Central America through Mexico over the next decade, you will have no border security as soon as the free trade is operational. A disarmed American citizenry invites criminal actions of all kinds. You must look at the anti-South Africa, anti apartheid movement, for the anti-gun political left is extremely well organized, coordinated, and financed. The present onslaught has been planned for many years. Key elements of their strategy include. Rely on emotionalism and ignorance. Capitalize on morbid events like the California schoolyard killing by keeping it stirring on regular occasions even if news precludes same. Or, focus on an isolated act of violence or murder, such as a vicious double murder in Denver, and then emotionally manipulate a vulnerable public with disinformation, semantic deception, and distortion to create an overnight anti-gun bandwagon. Emphasize the idea that guns kill people, instead of the truth that people kill people, with knives, strangulation, hammers, hatchets, axes, weed trimmers, lawn mower blades, chainsaws, poison, cars, and guns. Your old killer, Ted Bundy, didn't seem to need a gun to viciously slaughter 50 to 100 pretty, young women. Utilize the Hegelian principle. This is a three-step process authored by Hegel and perfected by the Marxist-Leninists, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. The first step, thesis, is to create, or fabricate, preferably, a problem. The second step, antithesis, is to generate opposition to the problem, fear, panic, hysteria. The third step, synthesis, is to offer the solution to the problem created in step one, change which would have been impossible to impose on the people without the proper psychological conditioning achieved in stages one and two. The Propaganda Onslaught Having created the problem, that is, guns kill people, and therefore, are evil, step two is to create fear, panic, and hysteria.
Since early 1989, you have seen the most concentrated, orchestrated media blitz against guns since the media and political left cranked up for the INF Treaty and for South African sanctions. Thousands of articles in newspapers and magazines have appeared with titles such as Buyers holding AK-47s, There's no right to bear semi-automatics, assault weapons, death, and taxes. An article claiming that the medical cost of treating gunshot wounds in America is a billion dollar a year price tag for taxpayers, pushes best friends, the NRA, playing with guns, etc. Nationwide polls mostly fabrications, but with questions such as, do you think we should end bloodshed and massacres with assault rifles? Claim 80% of the public is for banning these killing machines. Well, I should hope that all people everywhere would be against killing by any means whatsoever. In short, the media is creating the appearance of a great groundswell of support, just as they did for pro-war in the Middle East, through lies and fabrication and selected interviews, for a gun ban, just, again, as they did previously with South African sanctions. It is also tying the guns directly to the emotional issue of drugs, intimating that if you get rid of one, you'll get rid of the other. Now, again, who owns and operates the media? Ah, yes, the Khazar elite, would be one world rulers. Their stolen home nation Israel, is the biggest gun and weapons dealer in the entire world attacking the pro-gun groups. The political left and the media have launched a massive propaganda campaign against the 2.8 million member National Rifle Association, gun dealers, gun magazines, and owners by depicting these pro-gunners as bloodthirsty, heartless, trigger-happy, and sleazeballs. The New York Times article pushes best friend, the NRA by Ted Kennedy, who has dozens of automatic armed bodyguards, talked about how, the unholy alliance between the NRA and the drug dealers is slowly turning some urban neighborhoods into killing fields and transforming Washington and other cities into free fire zones, extending the bans to handguns and ammunition. It is noteworthy that the campaign to ban assault rifles and semi-automatic weapons is being spearheaded by Handgun Control Inc. and the National Coalition to Ban Handguns. The attack on semi-automatics is a backdoor attack on banning handguns, their top priority. This is seen in a lot of the new legislation popping up in various states. Legislation has been introduced to ban the manufacture, transfer, and importation of 25 and 32 caliber bullets, saying, much more legislation on other calibers of ammunition will follow. Link guns to drugs and the drug war. In the classic use of guilt by association, the political left is equating guns with the drug war, arguing that with a gun ban, the drug war would evaporate. Senator James McClure, an Idaho Republican, has countered that the gun ban, has almost nothing to do with any real assault on drug trafficking and drugs in this country. Can anyone believe that someone smuggling illegal drugs into this country will have any trouble smuggling illegal guns? Split the gun owners off from law enforcement. There are hundreds of liberal police chiefs, appointed by liberal mayors, around the country who have joined the political left in supporting gun control, and some of those are getting high media visibility. However, the great majority of law enforcement officers agree with the National Sheriff's Association, which has said, 
There's no valid evidence whatsoever to indicate that depriving American citizens of the right to own firearms would in any way lessen crime or criminal activity. The National Sheriff's Association unequivocally opposes any legislation that has as its intent the confiscation of firearms, or the taking away from law-abiding American citizens their right to purchase, own, and keep arms. Now, where did Hatton find this list of planned assaults against you the people? Right off the Bush administration's committee set up to accomplish gun control, action protocols. Rest well, America. Dharma, enough for this morning. We will resume with a discussion regarding legislation, etc., on the subject of gun control. As soon as the Bush administration can accomplish the disarming of the public, all the other plans will take over and you will be had. So be it. You can change it if you want to. Hatton to stand by, please. Source, Phoenix Journal Express, April, 1991, Volume 11, Number 1, Pages 7 to 11. HTTP, colon slash slash, phonixarchives.com, slash express, slash 1991, slash 01, slash 11, slash 0491, dot pdf. Editor's note, to all my listeners and viewers, please check out the description section of this video for the above source link along with access to the recommended starting set of Phoenix journals, as recommended by Commander Hatton to read first. The journals help unravel and clarify the many lies, tamperings and misconceptions foisted upon the masses. By those who seek to control the thoughts, perceptions and actions of others from generation to generation especially those of the true Christed life teachings of Isu Emmanuel Jesus Sananda. The Phoenix Journals are the word of truth given forth to mankind from the higher realms of light, during this most critical transition time upon Earth's evolution to a higher dimension. Please like, share and subscribe to help support my YouTube channel, and as always, have a wonderful day. In love and light. Thank you.